Hello everyone, this is Helen H. and welcome to my channel, Moss Cottage. I hope everyone is doing well today. I have a super fun little project today. This is something that was just like, you know, how thoughts just come to your mind and then over time you keep thinking, oh, I gotta try that, I gotta try that. Well, this is one of these. I tried it last night and oh my gosh, I love it. So, it all starts out with our humble grocery bag. Just a, just a paper grocery bag. Um, if you, uh, I'm not even sure if you can get paper at, I guess you can still get paper at the grocery store. Anyway, um, um, I'll, you know, if you go thrifting or whatever, what started this was I got a, a different paper bag from a different grocery store. I had gone thrifting and I bought something that was kind of heavy and it had, it was a box that had pointed edges and it ripped the paper of the bag. So the bag was no longer usable, even though it had a handle, it had a rip in it. So I tore the bag apart and this is on the sides of the bags, like where the bag folds up. It says, reuse me. I'm great for trash bags, crafts, right? So, this is going in the big girl, by the way. Anyway, it was perfect. It was time for me to actually put my thought into action. And so, this is what I did. I made these tags, and I don't know if anyone else has done this before. I'm sure I didn't even bother looking. This just came to my mind. I didn't see anybody. I wasn't inspired by anyone. I just made tags out of pieces of the paper bag. And I did several things to make them so that they're more usable. Um, I, I mean, they would be the way they are, but anyway. Um, so this is what I did. Um, I'll, I'll just give you an example here. Uh, let's see here, let's use this one. Okay, so I took the bag and, and I'll, I'll make one with you. Um, basically folded it into several pieces found a piece of paper, this background paper here is a piece of packaging paper, and I just sewed that on first. Then I turned it over and I painted the inside part of the bag with, I just used this very cheap, cheap gesso. You could use white acrylic paint, or if you have markers that, and pens that will write on this dark paper, you don't even need to do it. I just thought it would be easier to read if the journaling was on white. So that's why I did that. And I just pretty much painted inside the uh, lines where I sewed. I think one of them I went rogue. This one I went rogue and kind of went outside the lines, but I really prefer it kind of inside the line. And then I decorated it. I used a sticker on the front. See these cute boots with the flowers coming out of them? And then I used a sticker. This is actually a different sticker. I cut it in half and put a piece up here and a piece back there just to decorate them a little bit. So the, these are the ones I made. Here's another one with a sticker. And this is just a piece off the side of a calendar. See the part where it was in the spiral that I got ripped out? It says, make your own beauty. And then I just put a sticker on this side. This one here is just from a one of those how to draw books or how to paint. And I love this. It's the pencil drawing the clouds here. And then it's got just some arty words up there. And then I put a piece of the color swatch uh, down the side here, and this is the one where I went rogue and just painted all over the back white. Then this one and this one, believe it or not, the fronts came from the same piece of paper. That'll be a separate video how I made this really cool paper. Um, it's got glitter uh, Mod Podge on it and everything, but I just put those on the front and then on the back I just used little scraps from the, those paper where I tore the edges so that they weren't um, straight on the front. It doesn't bother me that there's there's little pieces of straight on the back. So I did those two and then these two I have not put um, focal points on because I don't know how I'm going to use them yet. This is just a piece of Edith Holden paper. So I have to tell you my Diary of an Edwardian Woman officially has been used because even though I could <laughs> couldn't pull myself to tear out a, a picture of the flowers or birds or anything. I did tear out a paste. It had text on both sides. So there it is. And I actually put a little wash of uh, gesso very light, lightly over it. And then on the back, again, just painting in here. And it was so serendipitous because a piece that I tore off here to get it to fit, it says here, today I saw a, and then it's blank. Isn't that cool? That's so fun. And then this one here, uh, is just um, 
this is that paper I will show you when I do a video showing you how to make this paper I have this paper here and then on the back it's, again it's just white with two little pieces of the same paper on the front and the back now like I said I most likely when I use these as journaling spots or tags I can always you know sew a little tab or staple a little tab on the top and use it as a tag instead of a journaling spot um, when I use them, I will put a image, focal image on the front, but since I don't know how I'm going to use them yet, I'm not going to do it. And these ones, the paper is so busy, I didn't need to use a focal point on those. So, okay, so let's go ahead and make one super easy. Now, if you don't have a sewing machine, don't worry because I'm going to make one right now without a sewing machine. I just love the stitching and I just, um, you know, went at it, but you don't need a sewing machine. So this is basically what it is. This is a piece of the bag right here. You can tear them any size you want. You know, it depends on what your, what your needs are, right? So I just randomly folded them up, okay? And I made sure that there's some torn edges. Now, on one of them, I can't remember which one it was. I think it was ugh, I, this one, I think right here. I made the mistake of tearing the end and this end was open which meant I tore it into pieces so I just had like a stack of three pieces of paper like I tore this end and the other end was already open so it, it was just it didn't matter I just took a binder clip and and put the the image on took it over to the sewing machine and sewed it and it worked fine so that doesn't matter but it is easier if you just you know have your strips or whatever you fold them up your orientation can go whichever way you know if you need it that way you can make it that way so I did that here's a little bit of janky tearing right here and then I just went ahead and gave them a quick uh, ink and I did ink uh, some of the um, focal point papers also this is the one I'm going to use on the front here and um, or is it this one uh, uh, no, this one's going to go on the front, I think. We'll do that one. So let me go ahead and ink that up real quick because I haven't done that. I inked the, the brown paper, this part, but I didn't ink this part. And, of course, inking is always optional. If you, Some do, some don't. I just like to give it a little bit of a ink. I, to me and my eye, it just makes it look more dimensional than just sticking something onto something. And, you know, I don't know if that's just a trick of light or something. I don't know. So now, at this stage, if you have a sewing machine, you can just go ahead and sew around it and sew it all closed, okay? But we don't, so that's fine. All we're gonna do is glue it. So I would probably recommend, now I haven't done with one with all gluing, but it's not really rocket science. I would probably go ahead and um, glue all the, each, each section to itself, if that makes sense. So this section, this fold was going to go in first, so I'm gluing that one down, and then I'm going to glue this piece, which I want to be as the top piece, because this is the one with the torn edge, and just glue it like that. Okay, so no sewing machine needed, you know, right there. And then obviously with the um, focal point or paper, whatever you're going to use, you can just glue that on. Now, I glued mine, I mean, I sewed my focal point on while, and at the same time, the, the purpose was it sewed the thing shut. So you only had to sew it once. If you sew, if you sew over the paper, it will sew it shut and sew that paper on there. If that makes, it makes sense. I don't know if I'm making it make sense. Okay, so there we've got that. Okay, and we can put a focal point on there, which we might. Now, I don't have um, lines, like on this, I just painted in between where my sewing lines was, right? Well, I don't have that here. So on the back, you determine how you want your writing space, if you want to color it in. Like I said, black pen would probably work on this and you would be able to see it just fine. I just for some reason wanted to just add a little bit of, I don't know, interest I guess is the word, to, you know, and I did it very sketchy, like I almost wanted to see those brush, sto brush strokes like this, okay, just like that, okay, so there's your writing space once that dries. Now, 
you can paint that black if you want to use white writing. That would work too. Either way, you can do it. Um, and if you also want, you can take a little bit of that gesso and smudge it on the front like I did with like this one right here. I used the paper I had made underneath and then I just actually very lightly put some gesso on just to kind of uh, mute that color a little bit. But you know, obviously you don't have to do that. So that leaves us with the uh, front here and then the back. Now, I need to find a focal point to put on the front, but while I need to, this back to dry, I had this other little piece of, see I used the coloring paper. This is the same sheet of coloring paper, and can you see there's a cute little birdhouse here? So I think, not as a focal point, because I don't want to put black and white on black and white, but I think what I'm going to do is just salvage that little uh, birdhouse image on the back, and what I'm going to do is use that as a little embellishment on the back side like I did on the others where I put the torn paper or that sticker I cut in half just to make the back. That's okay, but it's kind of boring, right? It's kind of plain. So I don't like plain. Now, if you're going to do a whole bunch of uh, writing, you know, you might need as much spot, uh, space as possible to write. Now this, okay, no, that goes to the side because of my tiny little journals, right? Those scraps are great for that. So see, just even adding that little birdhouse there adds a little bit of interest. And of course, I could have colored it in. And who knows, maybe later on when I use it, I might um, color it in. And I think it would be really fun to color it in with, with colored pencils. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue that on. Okay, so that's like that. Ooh, I'm all sticky now. Okay, and now, so we've got the black and white, and we've got, look what I just did there. That's okay. These are really grungy, and I love the grunge on them. So it, the fact that they're, as a matter of fact, I might even smear a little bit of the gesso on the front, because I really like, I like white with the, what color is this, craft kind of? It's a little bit darker than crap, but I guess it also depends on the bag you're using, which, you know, whatever. So there, I just kind of grunge that up a little bit. So for the focal point, you know, the sky's the limit here. You know that. It could be a stamped image that you colored and cut out. It could be a magazine image. <laughs> Look what I did. I just put my glue in my gesso. Any kind of focal point. But I thought what I would use for the sake of keeping this video somewhat short is a sticker. So I have this beautiful Bohemi Boho Dreams book that my girlfriend gave me. And that's actually where this sticker and this one on the back came from. And I think there was another one that had one of these stickers. Um, I was like, oh yeah, this one that says make your, make your own beauty. Um, I want to use some of these stickers instead of just hoarding them, right? So I have no color on here other than black and white. So really, I can use any sticker I want, um, but I'm not going to make it too painful. I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and use this sticker here, which is a big, beautiful bouquet of roses. And I think having that against that background will look kind of neat. It's kind of a juxtaposition of, did you like that word, of um, geometric, you know, black and white geometric shapes with beautiful pastel watercolory roses. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that in the middle. And of course, you know, the other thing you can use is sentiments on these. You know, it's just like decorating anything else like that. Isn't that pretty? And that's just made out of a paper shopping bag. Now, because both um, uh, the front and the back are a little bit tacky from where um, I put the gesso, what I do when I have something like that and I want it to dry well is I just go ahead and lean it up against something. So like I have my bottle of coffee spray, I'll just go ahead and lean it up against that. So both sides are getting some air and it can dry uh, quickly. So yes, so guys, that was it. And like I said, I know probably other people have done this before. I never looked at it, but it was just an idea that popped in my mind. And I thought, oh my gosh, I wanna give that a try. So 
while I was making all of these fun little doodads, let's get this one out of the way here. Um, oh, 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 yeah, 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 one other thing. Um, okay, we didn't run it through the sewing machine, right? No problem, because you know if you don't run something through the sewing machine, the simple answer is just to draw on faux stitching. And so you can just draw on some dash lines like you're doing a straight stitch, or a lot of times I'll do the straight, straight stitch for a bit, and then I'll do some like X's, and um, you can just do your faux stitching like it was sewn, and it's just as good, right? So don't fret if you don't have a sewing machine. You can still make these really cute. So there, okay? All right, so that's gonna go back up against there. So guys, something as simple as a shopping bag. We don't wanna throw anything away. And I'm just really finding, I'm enjoying crafts where I'm using trash like this and making beautiful things so much more satisfying than really than using, you know, prepared, pre-made papers and, you know, stuff like that. So I hope this idea helps you to look at things. Even if you get gift bags that are small or, uh, you know, I had one that I had to draw on the front for something and now the gift bag can't really be given, you know, it's a brown paper sack. It can't be given or decorated as a gift bag because I already drew on it, but it can be torn up because you can use the inside also, right? Just fold it up and make yourself some really cute, cute little junky, but yet not junky um, tags if, or, or journal spots. And, you know, if you don't, if you want them more elegant, but you still want to use recycled products, don't tear the edges. Cut them neatly and sew them very neatly, you know, and then you will have something that's a little, you know, less uh, rustic looking. So guys, I hope you like this project. Give it a try. Let me know if you do. And uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I ask that you do. And hello to all my new subbies. It's so nice to have you here. Guys, until the next video, I hope all of you are truly blessed. Bye-bye.